Now, a pair of stories about the competitive spirit tied to some big contests today. Let's start with America's most popular professional sport, football. Tens of millions of viewers will tune in today to at least one of the three NFL games on the schedule. That includes tonight's contest with the Atlanta Falcons playing the New Orleans Saints, who are led by one of the league's best quarterbacks, Drew Brees. Quarterbacks, of course, are the highest profile players in the game. Amna Nawaz has a look at the position's glory and pain. Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Cam Newton are household names, of course, and some of the best quarterbacks in the league. But those are the exceptions. It's a much rockier ride for most quarterbacks in the NFL. The Wall Street Journal did its own analysis and concluded the average career for that position is now just over three years in the league. A new book takes a close-up look at the ups, downs, and challenges of the position by profiling five well-known current and former quarterbacks. Naturally, it's called Quarterback. The author is John Feinstein, the prolific author, writer, and columnist for The Washington Post, who is back with us. Welcome back to the News Hour. Good to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy and Thanksgiving. You to like you that too. clever title, Quarterback? Uh, it was. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> Thought for hours and hours. <laughs> You wrote in the book, no position in sports is more glamorous, more lucrative, more visible than being a starting NFL quarterback. What was it about this position that made you want to dig well, into it? Well, part of it is that the NFL is, is so popular. Even with some of the downs that it's had in the last couple of years, it is still by far our most popular sport. And it's our most scrutinized sport. And quarterback is the most scrutinized position because, let's face it, the quarterback touches the ball on every single play and has to make probably eight to ten decisions on every single one of those plays, both before the snap and after the snap. Mm -hmm. And when a team is going well, he is a hero in his city. When a team's not going well, he is very much a goat in his city. That's why there's an old cliche that when a team is losing, the most popular guy in town is the second string quarterback. So you focus in on five names in particular, Andrew Luck, Joe Flacco, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Alex Smith, and Doug Williams. Big picture, how hard was it just to pick those five and why those five? Well, the, the common thread among the five of them, because they're very diverse in terms of their career paths, is they're all very smart. And I need, I need smart in these books because I, I need guys who are willing and able to share the kind of details and insight that I'm looking for mm -hmm. when I, try, when I re report these books. And all five of these guys were willing to give me the time, were willing after we started talking to, to kind of pull the curtain back on their careers and on their lives. Andrew Luck was going through the worst year of his life because he had to sit out the whole season and he was very blunt about what that did to him and how he hadn't realized how much of his identity was wrapped up with being a football player because he'd taken it for granted because he'd always been a star. The one non-active quarterback is Doug Williams. Mm -hmm. and. I wanted Doug because I needed an African-American voice in the book, and Doug was one of the first starting quarterbacks uh, in the NFL who was African-American, first one to start and win a Super Bowl, was the first one taken as a first-round draft pick back in 1978, and now, as the personnel director here in Washington, he still sees that in 2018, we've made a lot of progress, yeah. but there's still bias against African-American quarterbacks again, by, by a lot of scouts. They still don't see them naturally, quote-unquote, as quarterbacks very often. That part of the book did strike me when he said this is something, it still very much exists today. Is that specific, though, just to quarterbacks, yes. that kind of prejudice? Yes, it is, because the, the old cliche back in the 60s and 70s was quarterbacks weren't smart enough. Black, blacks were not smart enough to play the quarterback position because it is such a cerebral position, mm -hmm. unlike really the other 10 positions on the football field, you don't have to think quite as much. You're the guy calling the plays. You're the guy in control at the line of scrimmage. You're the guy making those decisions after the snap. And there was that, it's like the old line about why aren't there more African-American managers when Al Campana said all those years ago they didn't have the necessities. There was thinking among football people that African-Americans did not have the necessities to play quarterback. And the, the stereotype was, well, they're really fast. So let's put them at wide receiver. Let's put them at defensive back. And even this past year, Lamar Jackson coming out of Louisville, mm -hmm. who won the Heisman Trophy as a quarterback, six foot three, all the tools, there were scouts saying he should be turned into a receiver. Those ideas persist today. I want to ask you about some of the money that you focus on because you wrote in here, like billion dollar franchises can rise and fall on the shoulders of these guys. And that's when you look at the impact of injuries and mm -hmm. how those can change the entire trajectory of an entire franchise. You cite the example of Aaron Rodgers in here in 2017, how the Packers did before and after right. his injury. And just this week, we saw what happened with Washington and Alex Smith. So tell me, 
What's the impact of that? All the money that goes into this one role and how much rises and falls on one guy? Well, very much. And you, you cited good examples. Aaron Rodgers last year, the Packers were four and one when he hurt his collarbone. They finished seven and nine. Yeah. Andrew Luck missed the entire season. The Colts ended up four and twelve without him. And this year they're in contention for the playoffs with him back healthy again. It, now, there are exceptions. Nick Foles was able to step in for Carson Wentz last year in Philadelphia, and the Eagles won the Super Bowl. But he was a guy who'd been a starter. And that's why it is important to have a good backup quarterback, because quarterbacks get hurt. Right. They, they take One thing people don't understand is the pounding that a quarterback takes, because he's always going backward when he gets hit. So unlike guys who are going forward into one another, where some of the impact is, 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 isn't as much because they're going forward into each other. He takes huge hits. I've stood at locker rooms with all these guys inside locker rooms and watched them slowly peel their clothes off, and it's physically painful to watch. And that's why quarterbacks are so vulnerable, and that's why when one does get hurt, you're talking about Alex Smith getting hurt here in Washington, and there are a lot of people saying, well, Colt McCoy is just as good as he is. Colt McCoy is a very good backup quarterback. Mm. There's a reason why Alex Smith is being paid a guaranteed $71 million. I want to ask you about that health impact, too, because obviously there's a lot of conversation around the future of football when we look at what we know about mm. head injuries, repeat, repeated head injuries. We've got bodies now coming forward, a sports institute in Aspen saying, okay, we don't think kids should be playing tackle football right. Anymore. We think flag football should replace that as a standard until high school. The more we learn, the more that conversation advances. Do you think that's going to have an impact on how we see football or the place it holds in our society? I think it very much will. And, and we may not see it really manifest for 15 or 20 years. Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner, keeps saying football is safer than it's ever been because they have made rules to avoid helmet to helmet hits and, and, and to protect players. Football will never be safe. The, I've been in lots of locker rooms throughout my, my career. The only one where you feel palpable fear before a game is football because they know it's going to hurt to play, and they also know someone may end up like Alex Smith did on Sunday. That's a very real fear that they all feel before they go out onto the field. Once upon a time, mothers didn't want their sons to play football. Right. Now fathers don't want their sons right. to play football because they see all the numbers out there with CTE, with concussions, and with what the game can do to you. Some former football players themselves don't want their kids to play, right? With good reason. The book is Quarterback. The author is John Feinstein. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.